Great. That's exciting to hear. Um, that is going to be fun to look forward to the season. Um, you actually answered one of my other questions with with David Bliss and Sonny out of games gone, who is going to fill the top leadership roles. And I think you answered that with Terrence Woodbury. And Corey yeah, Terrence Butler. is leading the way. Corey's right there with him. And another guy that's really making, has made a very conscious effort to uh, to step up his maturity level and his approach to everything and 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 also exude leadership as Albert Jackson, our, our lone scholarship junior. Um, he is, uh, I've just really been pleased with his approach. And, you know, one of the reasons why we won the SEC championship was because Al, Albert turned a corner in his performance and, and started to do more. And that momentum has continued through the spring, summer, and fall. He's playing with more assertiveness, more confidence than, he, than he's ever played with. And, uh, you know, he's just developing like, like our players do. And, and, uh, and, and so, uh, you know, and then you think about Corey. Corey's a great story. I mean, you know, Corey was a student here that nobody knew from Adam. He showed up on tryouts, and, you know, to try out for the team back when we had more walk-ons than scholarship players. Um, you know, he was good enough to, 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 to make the team, but, you know, just, you know, not, not a very good player. And now he's to the point where, you know, he's a major, major contributor Absolutely. in our program and it, it could very easily start this year. So um, as a leader, he has a compelling story for, you know, for his, you know, for his teammates to pay attention to because he's literally as improved as any player I've ever been around. Uh, and, it's, and he's done it through uh, a lot of discipline and hard work and, and drive. Well, you mentioned uh, how young uh, the team is this year. Um, I kind of want to at least get to know a freshman or two, you know, what freshman specifically, you know, who might make an impact, who has a chance to make a big impact this year sure. as a freshman? Well, we have five of them, and all five of them are, are terrific talents. Uh, it's good a class as we've brought in, and, and uh, unfortunately we lost one of them for this year already to injury, uh, Abuka and Yora. Uh, uh, broke his leg, had a, had a rod put in his tibia, tibia just over a week ago to, you know, to, to, to help that heal. So he uh, will be taking a medical red shirt. So we're down to four of them. And, and uh, uh, Troy Tompkins is, uh, I think he was probably the best power forward in the country coming out of high school last year. And he's the kind of player offensively that can make a huge impact right away. And not only because He's, he's a really gifted scorer uh, from anywhere from NBA three-point range on in. But he, because of the kind of range he has to his game and the skill level he has, he, he has the ability to expand the games of his teammates and help make everybody better. For instance, our other post players that you know he'll play with uh, will have more space than they've ever enjoyed uh, in the low post when he's in the game because he literally has to be guarded at 22, 23 feet. And which is really perfect for our offense. Uh, uh, he, you know, he can pass the ball. He can put it on the floor and beat people off the dribble. He's just really, really talented and polished uh, as an offensive player. Uh, and we, we just really need to get him back on the court. He's only practiced a, a couple of days, and and uh, you know, yesterday he turned his ankle, so he's going to be gone for for a bit more. So uh, he's just had a, it's a, just a really run, bad run of, of luck with, with injuries here. Since he got here, we're, we're hoping that turns around in a hurry. Uh, Dustin Ware is a point guard from North Cobb Christian that is, uh, he, uh, he's going to be uh, just terrific. He's a point guard's point guard. He plays to pass and distribute and make teammates better. Um, you know, we'll never be able to replace Sunday out of games. He, he, he impacted the game in so many ways and he was such a cornerstone to the program. But when I think about uh, leaving the point guard position in the hands of guys like Zach Swansea and Dustin Ware, I, I really feel good because although they won't be precisely what Sundiata was, I think they can be just as good or better in a different way and that they're pure point guards. The position comes more naturally to them in terms of uh, being vocal, you know, organizers, uh, distributing the ball, making players better with playmaking skills to pass. And uh, so... Uh, I, you know, I, I, I feel really, really good about, about that position, even though we lost such a dominant player in Sundiata. And then we have two uh, really gifted wings to add to that. Uh, Drazen's Lavork is uh, he's the one player out of the freshman that's not from Georgia. He's from Serbia. Hmm. And what makes Drazen unique is that he's 6'9 as a perimeter player. So he's tall, long, and athletic. 
It has a great motor. It plays with a lot of energy and, uh, and, and has, you know, uh, tremendous skill potential for a guy who's 6'9". And then uh, uh, the last one is Travis Leslie. And Travis, quite simply, is the best athlete that has probably been in this program since Dominique. He's an explosive leaper and runner. And, and on top of that, he's got great instincts for the game. He's still learning how to play the game from a fundamental standpoint, and he's still uh, got a lot of development to go in terms of skills, ball handling, shooting from deep, and that sort of thing. But, but he has, as special as he is as an athlete, after coaching him for a week in practice, I'm convinced he may be just as special in terms of his natural instincts at the game. Mm -hmm. and, and natural instincts are a powerful thing. They're, they're, there's only so much you can do as a coach to teach instincts. But when a player has them, when he brings them to the table, that player really, there's no ceiling to how good he can be. So when you look at Travis's athleticism, along with his instincts, uh, he could be just as good as his work ethic will, will permit him to be. And, and he's, he's already learned a lot in a short, short time that he's been in Athens about what it means to work harder and play harder. So uh, I, I, I certainly think he's going to have a great impact this year as a freshman and, and, uh, and will and we'll have a special career at Georgia. There's no doubt that the, this recruiting class is reason to be excited about this Georgia program to continue building for the future. Um, I guess my last question would be, you know, we're hosting, I think, Virginia Tech and Missouri. You guys are playing in the preseason in IT. That's going to be exciting. I think we go to Georgia Tech and Western Kentucky. Yeah. Um, and Illinois. And Illinois, right, going to Chicago. Um, you know, we, we scheduled a tough non-conference schedule. Talk about the importance of that, you know, to play those tough games on the road and at home heading into uh, SEC play, which is such a tough conference to play. Sure. Well, it, um, I'm an aggressive scheduler, mm -hmm. and we tend to be aggressive about most things that we do. And, and uh, this year's non-conference schedule is a great example of that. It, it provides our really young team with some really stiff challenges right away to expose ourselves and find out uh, where we're at and, and what we need to improve at as we move forward and it also gives us an opportunity to uh, to beat some some really really good teams from other conferences power conferences around the country and and uh, and, and takes us uh, into some markets that can you know really get the name Georgia out there um, I, I, you know what we did in the postseason last year made Georgia a national story in basketball, in college basketball, for the first time since the scandal was the big yeah, national story. Right. And, uh, you know, if we can win two games at Purdue, we're going to the Garden in New York City. Uh, we're playing at the United Center in Chicago. Um, it, it, it gives us an opportunity to, to really get a lot of rich experiences you know, on, on the court as a team and, and, to, uh, and to get a lot of media. Uh, coverage for you know what what we're able to accomplish so and and certainly uh, gets us ready for you know the best basketball conference in the country in the SEC um, and 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 gives us some experiences that relate well to postseason uh, experience too so and and certainly the schedule bolsters our opportunity to earn our way to the postseason um, you know the selection committee uh, always put significant weight into, uh, you know, programs who are willing to go out and schedule tough. So, uh, certain, you know, it, it always comes down to winning enough games, but we will, you know, provided we win enough games, and as we're being evaluated for an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament, we will be looked on very, very favorably for the games that we chose to, to schedule in this year's uh, schedule. Great. Thank you, Coach. That's, that's all I have. George. Well, Coach, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for giving us uh, this opportunity. Sure. It's, a, it's a huge deal for a young journalist as, as us to, to get to interview somebody with your magnitude. And also, I'd like to thank you for all your work that you do with the community and, and with the Boys and Girls Club and, uh, and uh, for being an inspiration to, to many kids, and especially the kids that I, that I work with. Wow. So, uh, Coach, nothing but the best of luck to you and your team. And, and uh, I'm sure I'll see you at the uh, tournament at the end of the season. There you go. We appreciate your support. Thanks All right. Thanks, Coach. See you guys. Thanks.